Hey you guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. Um, on this topic, I'm going to be talking about uh, what I was talking to you guys about yesterday, which I got cut off. Um, and I just didn't want to waste my time and, you know, not post it just because I got cut off. But I will continue what I was talking about yesterday, which was, you know, the narcissist does not stop stalking you until they destroy you. They don't stop stalking you until they destroy you and i basically left off on how my grandmother had told me you know this man he's gonna turn you to dust and i couldn't understand you know why she would say that she would tell me that man you know he's gonna turn you to dust leave him alone don't worry about what he's doing in his life don't worry about what he has going on. Because in my mind, when he discarded me the first time, the breakup had me tormented because this was like my first real serious relationship. You know, like um, the relationships I had before that were you know, that of a, a young person, someone who, you know, in high school and, you know, um, I didn't have, he was my first adult um, relationship and he was 10 years older than me. I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't think there was a big difference. I didn't think it mattered. You know, um, I really didn't think it mattered. Um, because they they felt young, they felt refreshing, they felt like, you know, they felt like someone close to my age group because the narcissist acts really young. It got to the point sometimes where the narcissist would be like, you know, like if we went somewhere and they asked me for my ID or something, the narcissist would be like, you know, taking their ID out and like, almost acting or saying things in a way where he was like you know people think I'm younger than you things like that and I would think to myself like he's delusional like like that thought came to my mind that he thought that he could be in my age group to me it was kind of like why would he say that like I felt like there was some type of delusion right um, so this person, you know, acted mature, acted young, acted, you know, made himself or presented himself in a way where, you know, he was a victim and he was just out here trying and, and doing his best or whatever. And I felt sorry for him. And at the same time, he was teaching me things because, like I said, I, I was sheltered most of my life. Hold on, you guys, real quick. I don't want to cut it off because then I won't be able to finish. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just got my, my coffee and... Anyway, um, so I really felt like I was dealing with someone who just had a rough time. And at the same time, I was learning a lot about them because at the time, like I said, I grew up in a really religious background. I was sheltered a lot. Growing up, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to like, you know, watch movies. I didn't really watch any Disney movies, you know. I remember going to my cousin's house and she had like a whole bunch of tapes. You know, back in the day they had tapes, um, big tapes that you put in into like cassette players or whatever. Um, but she had all these Disney movies, like every Disney movie you can think about lined up. And I remember just being like at odds with it. Like, wow, you have every Disney movie. You have, 
Barbie dolls, you know, my grandmother, you know, she, she was strict, you know, she didn't believe in any of that. And then my mother and all her siblings were raised the same way, you know, Catholic, um, like hardcore. And, you know, they were very popular in the community. Um, my grandmother has gotten awards by the Pope. So, you know, I've talked to you guys about the cult, you know, part of it. Um, just narcissism that goes on in the church as well. I've talked to you guys about that. But I know, I know that this, you know, I'm going a little bit off because I am speaking about the narcissist stalking. But this is just to give you guys a little bit of background on why the stalking wasn't alarming me. Why, why I thought it was normal, you know, a lot of times when you watch movies, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of pay attention to the villain in movies. So you get an idea of bad people, right? I didn't have that. It's not something that I was paying attention to that I was conscious of. And I was raised in a way where I was around narcissists who didn't really show affection or um they were very um robotic you know it was all about working hard staying positive not having any negative thoughts so i grew up having a lot of confidence you know and it was like no matter what anyone would tell me i was in my own little world because I had been in my own little world for so long, not being influenced by certain things. So as I got older, I realized I was being controlled. I realized that people were being hypocrites. You know, they were going to church, getting all these, being admired and, and they were being hypocrites. And I started to dig into spirituality, you know. I started to take a different route and then that's when my troubles began just just that alone with my family. Then um when I got with the narcissist, he was confirming a lot of the things that I had experienced. It's like when you co you're coming out of a cult, it's like you're in the get out movie, you know? And People are forcing their beliefs on you. And if you are not complying, there's something wrong with you. You're the devil. You know, you, you, my grandmother was like, you know, um, I'm going to pray for you because even Mary Magdalene was able to be saved. And, and when she compared me to Mary Magdalene, if you guys don't know, she was a prostitute in the Bible and she compared me to her and I couldn't believe it. I was shocked, but she was, she was watching me. She was watching the narcissist. She felt like the narcissist wasn't just disrespecting me. He was disrespecting my family. And I didn't see it that way because I'm like, he doesn't even, he doesn't know you guys. He doesn't do anything to you guys. And I couldn't see that the stalking and what he was doing to me was wrong. That just lets you know my my state of mind. I wasn't fully conscious, you know. Um, I was going to school, doing things. Um, a lot of a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things that I think about is my level of consciousness at that time, and how the narcissist knew my level. Of, they studied me, you know. They knew, you know, hey, this person has their future, their life ahead. Um, they might be book smart, but they're not like street smart. They don't know what's going on. Um, when it comes to me being book smart, um, I also see myself as, you know, at the time having a lot of information even when it came to like you know when you're in school and you're going to college and you're studying and um you're passing your tests 
it's like it's like having information but not understanding it completely like you think because you remember the definition you understand fully the topic that you're discussing it's like studying psychology and you're studying you know different personality disorders and you know hey this is this is what this is the definition for someone who is typically a narcissist but it's not until you actually go through it that you really understand the disorder so i was book smart but not street smart and if you're not if you're not you know if you haven't had life experiences you can go to school you can pass you can learn things but it's not until you're in that field and you're working that stuff gets real and you'll and you'll be able to refresh in your mind and 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 understand what you studied and understand it better and and it's not until you experience certain situations so when you are not fully conscious the narcissist knows this my family knew i wasn't fully conscious and this is why my grandmother told me you know he's going to turn you to dust because she knew I wasn't fully aware. She knew I had been sheltered. She, you know, everyone was trying to mold me into what what they expected me to be. Um, I also had no remorse towards my mother for, you know, picking my dad. I didn't really understand that because my dad was a narcissist as well. And when it came to boys, when I started, you know, dating the narcissist, um, and this was my first real relationship, my dad was basically like, you know, does this person, you know, take you to go wash your car and get your car vacuumed? You know, because at the time I had just got a brand new car because I had started college. So, you know, I feel like looking back now, the narcissist was envious of my lifestyle. They were jealous because, you know, I came from, I'm not the, like I said, I'm not, I'm not the wealthiest, but, you know, I got my first car when I was in high school. You know, when I went to college, I got a, I got a luxurious car. So I went from getting, you know, a, a basic car in high school because it's my first car to now I'm getting you know, now I'm getting, you know, luxurious things. And I feel like the narcissist was jealous of that. And I feel like um, the reason I couldn't see that this person was a predator when they were stalking me is because they tried to make themselves seem like they were young, like the 10 year gap difference wasn't a big deal. And I didn't think it was a big deal. If anything, I thought, you know, a lot of a lot of times when you're young, you're attracted to older people because you feel like they can show you something. You can learn something from them. You get around them and, and they're they're agreeing with everything you're saying. You're telling them you're coming from a from a family that's a cult, that you're leaving the cult. And and you know your beliefs about spirituality and the narcissist is just there agreeing with you. They're telling you everything you want to hear. And I felt a connection, a spiritual connection because they, I'm like, wow, this person understands me, you know? So this is why when the stalking was happening, I thought it was normal. I thought, you know, maybe this is what relationships are like. I'm you know, I felt like everyone was attacking my relationship, but they were seeing the red flags. This person is, you know, coming to the house unexpectedly in the middle of the night, blowing the horn, expecting me to come outside because they can't reach me. And I'm thinking they just miss me or, you know, they didn't want to go to sleep mad with me. You know, they want to make up with me. And the making up became like a high. You know, because he would get mad. I wouldn't understand why he was mad. I'm thinking it's a guy thing or maybe he's going through something. You know, I'm encouraging him. You know, it's never too late encouraging him. He's telling me all his dreams and ambitions and, and I'm sharing mine. 
while I'm while I'm living my dreams, while I'm putting that action in, you know, I'm not knowing that I'm motivating an evil person. And that's why they won't stop stalking me because I motivate them enough to think that they could do better than me. And when they realize they can't, they come running back. When they think about the fact that I still have a lot of opportunities that they don't have, a part of them hates me because of that. I'm not thinking that, you know? It's like, you're not thinking someone hates you just because you have a chance at life. It's not your fault, the situation that they're in, you know? But the narcissist will bring that baggage into your life knowing they're destroying your relationships. So, you know, it took me to go through that and, and looking back now and thinking about my dad telling me, you know, hey, did the narcissist wash your car? And now I, I think back on those things and I'm like, well, why didn't he tell me what he really thought about the narcissist? Why did he just say that? Like he was just fishing. And that's what made me you know, um, know that my mom went through it as well. That's what gave me more compassion for her. But it's not until the narcissist fully, you know, destroyed me that I finally understood what happened to my mom because, you know, she was a teacher and then she became a nurse. She modeled when she was younger. Um, she had her whole life ahead of her and then she had her, her whole life taken away. And a lot of time, and it, it was because she met my dad when she was a nurse and he was a nursing assistant, which is a CNA. And a lot of narcissists get into jobs where they're doing the minimum and they're hoping to get a supply greater than them. And in the long run, it didn't go, it didn't go good for my dad because the lifestyle that he lived with different women eventually caught up to him and he ended up in jail. And that's when he settled down because life got hard. That's when he finally got remarried. And his wife was, I would consider a narcissist because she didn't like me. Um, when I would come visit him, she would basically tell me to go into the garage to to talk to him like he would have to we would have to go sit in the garage to have a conversation because she didn't want me in the house and I didn't think nothing of it when I was younger and then when I got older I was like that's kind of jacked up you can't <laughs> she doesn't want you in her house because he lives with her she's and I didn't do nothing to this woman you know she just didn't have any children with him and he had children with everyone, you know, because I have a lot of siblings. Um, so he gave me the warning, but he almost didn't, he didn't tell me the truth of what he really thought. And I realized that he, my own father was such a narcissist that he wanted and he knew that I was going to go through it with someone just like him. He saw the signs. And he almost like gave me a hint, but didn't really, you know, try to stop me or say anything, anything to help me really. Because of his own narcissism, I even feel like my dad was jealous because of, of my car. Like he was bringing up my car and vacuuming who's gonna vacuum your car you know the narcissist was attracted to my lifestyle as well but I couldn't see those things because I didn't know people were like that you know you I didn't know that people were envious like that I, I felt like if someone wants something they're just gonna go get it but I never judged them for not having it I was a I, I was the type of person that you know if you just if you didn't if you didn't have what i had um it didn't mean anything to me you know i just wanted to have fun and and you know i just liked having fun at that moment you know i was enjoying life and 
that's typically where, where when narcissists prey on people, when you're living your life, when you're not expecting anything, you know. But this is why she would keep telling me he's going to grind you to dust because of the stalking. Um, and she, my grandmother had her own story that she used to, you know, speak of to all of us about how she dealt with the narcissist when she was younger. And she would always say in these stories that she used to uh, tell us that the narcissist that she dealt with, she didn't know the terminology. I didn't understand the story. I understood the story, but I didn't think the man she dealt with had some type of disorder. I just felt like, okay, you got played and that's it, you know? Just because that happened to you doesn't mean it's going to happen to me. That was my attitude. I didn't know that it was a disorder. It was it was a thing, right? She didn't have a name for it. You know, if she would have had a name for it and then I would have looked it up. You know, the type of information you have nowadays, it's like now you can look it up and try to figure out what you're dealing with. This is why narcissists now they're hiding. Some of them are hiding and some of them are out in the open and people are accepting it because they don't understand it. They know it in a superficial level. They think it's cool to be narcissistic. Most people try to act like a narcissist and you think they're narcissists because they're trying to act like one. They think it's cool. It's became a thing. But a true narcissist is wicked. This person literally wants to kill you. They they think about you dying while they're with you. And that's deep. They think about you dying. They think about you killing yourself. They think about hurting you. And you're not thinking something. You, you're like, I didn't do anything to this person. Why would they want to do that to me? Why would they want to call you bad names? Why would they want to hit you? Why would they want to see you go through pain? Why would they want to see you suffer in, in silence? Why would they want to see you um, physically ill and, and, and not feel any type of way? Why? You know, that's who they are to the core. And on top of that, you know, they're watching you lose your reputation, your family, your friendships, your lifestyle. You're destroying yourself and you're just anything to do, anything to be with the narcissist. You're just, I just want to be with this person. It's like, it's like life doesn't matter. Like It's like you're, you're holding on to what you think is love. You think, oh, you know, love is going to set us free, you know. I know that people are telling me that I need to focus on myself, focus on these things, but I can always do these things while those opportunities are slipping. And now you're getting older and, and now those opportunities are not there anymore. Now those scholarships aren't there anymore. You know, you're thinking it's not, I, I don't care. I'm okay with losing those things. Because you don't even realize you've been brainwashed. You don't even realize the narcissist has your mindset really messed up. So it seems like certain things don't matter to you. If you lose certain friendships, relationships, you feel like it, it's not important until you don't have those things anymore. And the narcissist is gone. And now you're watching everyone else live their lives. And everyone else is still connected to one another. Your friends are still gathering together and you're just not in the picture anymore, you know? So my grandmother, when she was telling me, you know, that the stalking wasn't normal and that he was up to something, that he was a bad man, she'll be like, that man is a bad man. And I would tell the, the crazy part, I would tell the narcissist what, what she would say about him. And he would laugh and, and, you know, be sarcastic. Why does she think I'm a bad man? Oh, she's just judging me. She's just racist. She's this. She's that. He was just 
putting my mindset thinking about things that weren't real, that weren't true. Um, I started to change. You know, my voice started to change. Everything about me started to change. The way I, I my mindset started to change, you know. Um, I became negative. I wasn't, you know, once upon a time I felt invincible and now I felt crippled. Um, so people around me saw that and they would, my own brother looked me in the eyes and he was like, you're not my sister. And I'm like, why would you say that? He said, there's something different about you. Like, you're you're not my sister. It's like, I couldn't even see myself changing. And then, you know, yes, I, I, I got wiser and things like that. But I made enemies with the people closest to me because they didn't know who I was anymore. I was I was having mood swings. Um, I wasn't as friendly anymore. You know, I wasn't my happy-go-lucky self anymore. I wasn't that person that lights up the room anymore. Um, I was always into music. You know, I, I grew up, my grandmother didn't let me watch TV. But one thing I used to do is I used to turn that radio on. So I was really into music. I, I used to love singing, you know, drawing, painting, all those things change. I was a good artist too. And now I it's like, I couldn't even think about drawing or painting or doing any of those things because... I feel like is I'm not really talented anymore, <laughs> you know. Um, um, it was like I was just changing into someone else, and I wasn't even seeing it that way. But other people could see it. I started to dress differently. I started to feel like I had to do whatever I had to do to make sure I looked. The way the narcissist wanted me to look. You know, people are noticing. You know, you start doing those eyebrows a little funny, a little thick. You, know? <laughs> you start doing those eyebrows a little thick. You start wearing some lashes, you know. Um, people started noticing, you know. I'm like, you know, but I'm not thinking that this person is crazy even though you know they're doing things that to the normal person would think this girl is crazy that, that man is crazy she's crazy for dealing with someone like that it's like the narcissist was always 10 steps ahead because they knew they knew that these were the thoughts that people were going to have and they were already ready for it you know, it's like, you know, if if they felt like, oh, your family's not going to like me because they feel like my life isn't shit. I'm going to I'm going to tell you, you know, I don't have a lot, you know, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm, you know, uh, they're going to sell you a dream. They're already, you know, they already know what people are going to say. They already know that when they're stalking and things like that you're going to tell your friends certain stories you're going to tell your family certain stories so they're looking at your family like the enemy and they these people don't even know them and they'll start disrespecting you and stalking you even more they'll reach out to your family behind your back they'll reach out to your friends behind your back when they're hoovering you See, the narcissist hoovers, discards, and love bombs throughout the whole relationship. But there's going to be periods of times where they start reaching out to the people around you. That's weird. You know, they remember they remember every address that you ever took them to. You know, they pass by those people's homes. They try to befriend people connected to those people you brought them around. They're like a whole serial killer in a movie. 
I'm not lying. You know, and when my grandmother said, you know, he's going to turn you to dust. That's because she, when she dealt with her own narcissist, he, you know, at that time she lived in a, in a farm when she was younger and she lived a whole different lifestyle, no electronics, nothing, right? Horses and, and cows. He, she's in a farm and this man is writing her love letters. She's thinking it's romantic that he's writing her love letters, but her, my grandmother, my grandmother's grandmother at that time told her, don't feed into the, 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 the love letters. It doesn't mean shit. But she was still writing them, writing him letters, hiding the letters under a little hole that she created so that no one would know that they were writing each other. Um, when she found out that he was engaged to be married, it broke her heart because he told her to her face, you know, I'm caught up between two women. That's what he told her and she said well you know she told me that she was so hurt and so angry that she told him you know well now you don't have to be and she just left you know and even though he was engaged to be married and he was going through with it he was still contacting her he even came to her house playing the damn guitar with a band trying to get her back and the grandmother said, don't you go out there. Don't you listen to his damn music. Don't give him any energy or time. He's playing you. He's playing with you. You give yourself respect as a woman. He already had his chance. He messed it up. He lied. There's no going back from a lie. So my grandmother told me it was very important to not, when people deceive you, you can't go back. But I... I always felt like you should always give people chances. You taught me how to forgive. That's all she ever taught me how to do. You know, you fight with your siblings. You fight with your family, your friends. She, you know, she's like, you know, we're family. We can't fight. We can't stay mad at each other. We have to forgive. No matter what happens, as, as nasty as it gets, she made everyone apologize. That's one thing about my grandma. She made you apologize and she made you, she, she always taught forgiveness. That was her whole thing. So to me, it was like, how could you teach me something? And when someone is trying to show me that they're apologetic, when they're stalking you and they're hoovering you and they're trying to give you flowers and take you out, I'm, I'm like, how could you not forgive? Like, that's just, this is how the world is. I couldn't understand it. And like I said, the narcissist made himself appear mentally more younger, you know, um, and even got to the point where he would start disrespecting me. And basically he'll say little things like, I think I look younger than you. And I would think to myself, like, no, you don't. Like in my head, I would be like, why is someone 10 years older than me even talking to me like this? I would think it was weird, but I didn't really understand it completely until, of course, it was over. And he grinded me to dust, like my grandmother said. So, you know, people tried to get through me, but I was stubborn. And the stalking, I thought it was love. Them coming to my house, <clears throat> you know, trying to talk to me, playing, playing music, sending me love songs, sending me messages with love songs, you know, um, leaving notes all over my car, going to my school, writing messages on my car window, um, coming to my job bringing me gifts in front of my co-workers you know everyone and, it, and it's like everyone at the job oh that's so sweet that's so cute these are so pretty and I'm just in a in a, a fairy tale world not knowing that 
all those gifts and all of that love bombing, it was a form of putting fog so that I wouldn't see that he shouldn't even had discarded me in the first place, you know? Um, and, and it would be like in a way where it's like, you know, very predatorial. It's like um, the stalking was like, he wouldn't stop, you know, it would not stop. Yeah, a week can go by where we might have not talked. But once he wanted to come back, he wouldn't stop until I opened the door. I used to allow this person to come back easily because they would give me gifts and things. And then, you know, you're, then it got to the point where it got disrespectful. I went out to this five-star restaurant in Beverly Hills with the narcissist. And um, I've shared this with you guys, but I, at the time, you know, I was making a lot of tips and things like that. And when I went out with the narcissist, he knew that, you know, because he was secretly jealous when I would come to his, go home to him because I ended up getting kicked out for dealing with him and I ended up moving in with him working and my focus was on the wrong things. So I had to work. So to me, it's like I have to make extra money. So I'm, I'm, I'm bartending at this point and I'm making tips. And when I would come home, he, I could see the jealousy, you know, like this jealousy in his eyes. Like it was kind of like, Damn, no matter how much I try to break you, you're you're you just keep going. Now you're counting money in front of my face. You know? This person's older than me, jealous. You know? And I remember even I got to the point where I would tell him like you have a daughter. Would would you want your daughter going through this? You can't bring up their kids. That's like against the rules. You know what I'm saying? So they got crazy. Like, don't speak on my daughter. Da, 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 da. But to me, it was like, dude, you know, I'm young. Your daughter is going to be my age one day, you know, soon. Because time is going by fast. So he would get pissed. You know, um, but when I, when I went to this restaurant in Beverly Hills... Um, the steaks and, and everything. We went for his brother's birthday and they ended up ordering like the most expensive steaks on the menu. I'm talking about like $400 steaks. Some crazy shit, you know, like both of their steaks were about 400 My meal was about like $160. You know, which is typical. Like if you get, usually it's going to be like $100 for one person, you know. But, you know, we we order drinks and stuff like that. So to me, when we got the check, I'm thinking these motherfuckers got the most expensive steaks on here. I hope they don't think I'm a, we're going to split this bill and I'm going to put in so much money when you guys purposely got these expensive meals so I put in what I ordered and then I put in extra money I put like $60 extra on the tab I told him this is you know a lot you know so I paid for whatever I got and then I put $60 $60 extra because I had an I had a feeling that the narcissist ordered all of that on purpose because they knew I had tips, you know, they knew I was getting money at that time. Um, and I had that extra money to waste. So I felt like they were trying to take advantage of me. That was my first thought. And I told myself, if this man thinks that I'm gonna pay for him and his brothers, because it's his brother's birthday, like, no, that's your brother. You should be the one really covering the whole tab to be real because I'm supposed to be your girl 
and this is your brother, you know, so really it's, it should be you. But I had this feeling like he was going to do something because when we were in the restaurant, he was very, he was acting very arrogant, very like disrespectful in front of like, he was acting real ghetto, like real, real ghetto, like, like trash, like he was trying to act like, yeah, I'm in a nice restaurant. It's expensive in here. That we got money. We don't care about these expensive steaks. We got money. That was his energy. And I'm looking at him like, who the hell is this person? It's like they have so many different masks. It's scary. But I knew the Eric, I already knew his arrogance, but it was to another level when we were at that restaurant. So when the narcissist comes, he he leaves when the tab comes and then he comes back when um he comes back from the bathroom and he's like, you know, add the rest of the money on here. And I'm like, I'm not paying, you know, I'm not putting in any money. Like, this is it. Like, I put $60 extra. Like, you guys are going to have to pay for them expensive ass steaks you guys got. What the hell did you guys think this was going to be? A free dinner? Like, I think not. Like, I'm not a sucker like that. And that's why the narcissist hated me, too. Because I, even though I was stupid, I wasn't a sucker all the way either. You know? Like, I never gave that. I never was someone that's, like, giving him money or anything like that. With me, I feel like he used me more for the image, just being with a younger person and for sex. That's really what I feel like he used me for because he sold me a dream. So when we leave this restaurant, well, what I ended up doing is I ended up leaving the restaurant when he was trying to demand me to give him more money. I had the money. I just was not going to give it to him. And I got up and when I was trying to get up to leave, he grabbed me by my hair and pulled me back in front of everyone. And it was kind of crazy because we're like in this five star restaurant. You have all these bougie people around. And when he pulled my hair, I'm talking about nobody said anything. They saw what he did and they just continued talking to their family and friends or whatever, like nothing was happening. It was kind of funny, but not funny. But it was like I was in a fucking horror movie and nobody was doing shit. Like, <laughs> like it was, it was crazy because it's like, it's like everybody went back, like eating their food, drinking their drinks, like, like no one would. It was like things were happening right in front of them, and they're just like, I'm in a movie. It was crazy. So. And of course, I wasn't expecting anyone to get involved, but it was it was kind of like I at least expected them to all be staring or pulling their phones out or something at that point. But no, everyone just goes back like nothing. And I walk <laughs> and then my phone dies and the narcissist is like, if you're not going to help me pay for the bill, then you better you're going to walk home. He said, you're going to walk home. And I was like, the hell I'm not. And I walked to, um, my phone died. So I walked to the front of the restaurant, spoke to the host. And I was like, hey, can you call me a cab to the front? And she called me a cab. The cab was there, like, I swear, like in two, three minutes, like right away. Got into the cab and paid like $50, $60, um, and no, paid like like thirty dollars because when I got in, I I felt like I was never gonna talk to the narcissist again because I felt humiliated. I never felt like that embarrassed in my life. I couldn't believe he put his hands on me, and then on top of that, he did it in public. So when I got in the car, um, in the taxi ride, I had a lot in my mind going on. I had a lot of stuff in my mind going on. A lot of stuff going on in my mind. My bad. And I don't know if the cab driver just happened to um, feel my energy. But 
he basically gave me half off my ride. He was like, it's okay, you can pay me half. So I was supposed to pay like $50 and I think I paid like $25, $30 for my ride back, you know, um, to the other side of the city. You know, because I, I technically, you know, we don't live in Beverly Hills. So um, I ended up uh, getting to my car and driving home. I'm thinking like nothing of it. You know, I'm thinking we broke up. We're not, he's not messing with me. He's mad. I don't care. Be mad. I've never gave a man money and I'm not going to start now, no matter how much I love you. That's one thing about me. I've never been, I've never gave any man. I have never any, every, any guy I ever dated, even, even though the narcissist was my first relationship, they weren't the first person I dated. I dated other people. I just never took it to that next level with them because I dated them. We went out on dates. We went out to dinner. They didn't expect anything of me. And some of these people I dated, you know, we didn't have anything in common. We didn't have anything to talk about. Um, I felt like a lot of them were shady, you know, um, a lot of them were probably in relationships. They couldn't give me the, the energy. They just wanted to take me out on, on dates and I was okay with it. You know, um, so I would, I would take that, but I was very like, you know, in order for me to be intimate with you, I want commitment, you know, and I, and the narcissist gave me the type of commitment that I thought I wanted or needed. And that was consistency, attention, admiration, you know, the, the full effect but I never was the type of woman that if I went out on a date with a guy, I was going to go pay 50-50 or anything like that. So I felt like the whole relationship, he was just trying to break me down to be that type of person. And I just wouldn't break, I wouldn't budge no matter how much he ruined my life. Um, so when I did get home, I wasn't expecting him to come back around. And... I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, witching hours, with him knocking at my window. I opened the window. Hey, open the door. No, I'm not opening the door. You left me stranded in Beverly Hills. You got home though. When I he said when I got home, your car wasn't there. So you got there before me. And then he goes, Come on, open the door. I, I I'm drunk. And you were the one that was supposed to drive because you were supposed to be the designated driver. And, and you made me so mad. And he said that he said that he didn't leave me stranded, that when he got to the car, he was expecting me to be standing next to the car and get in. But I wasn't there. He said, I was looking for you so you could drive. And I ended up getting lost. So he's like, I'm drunk and lost and my phone was dying. So he was getting, you know, he was going through it supposedly, but I don't really even believe that. I didn't even believe that. I didn't believe him because when I was waiting for my taxi, he walked right by me and said, and, and acted like he didn't see me. He walked right with his brother right behind me and I knew he saw me. He made contact with me like, 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 bitch, you're walking home. Like, bitch, figure it out, you know, in front of his brother. And it was like, it was, to me, it was like he was trying to get admiration from his brother. He was trying to make it seem like he always treated me like that. When he didn't always treat me like that. He was just taking his abuse to another level. See, he was, he was doing all the stalking. But the disrespecting me in public and in front of people, his siblings, his family, he hadn't done that yet. And he might have done that to other people, but he hadn't done that to me. So to me, I took it personal. And he uh, he tried to say, you know, I didn't I didn't I didn't see you. 
He was trying to make it seem like what happened didn't happen. And somehow what happened was my fault. And what I did with what I did with not splitting the tab was very classless because, you know, when you go out as a group, you want to split it. But when you know people are having bad intentions, the fuck? I'm a, why would I want to split something when I know your intentions right along with your brother were jacked up? And it was and it, it showed me who his brother was as well, because I I thought me and his brother were OK. You know, we joked around, you know, we drank coffee together in the morning sometimes. So, you know, his brother would make me coffee and stuff. So I thought me and his brother were cool. And I even bought him, you know, a bottle for his birthday, you know, as a gift before we went to the restaurant. So to me, it was like, you're disrespecting me. You're letting your brother disrespect me. And I'm not paying for this damn tab. Screw the both of y'all. I don't know what type of sucker you think I am. So, you know, I'm I'm in love, not stupid. You know, I'm naive, but not that naive. Not that dumb. I've never gave no man no money. So um, I ended up not opening the door and he got so mad and he starts shaking the window um the gate to the window the bars he's shaking the bars to where one of the screws popped out and then he tried putting his arm in through the door and i start closing the door i mean i start closing the window then he started calling me and he's like, I'm not leaving until you come outside. I didn't come outside. And he was forced to leave. So he was pissed. I didn't want nothing to do with the narcissist at this point. But he kept stalking me. He kept trying to reach out to me. He kept trying to buy me. He kept trying to tell me that he was really drunk. And I took him in. Even though at this point, my family wants nothing to do with me. My career, everything I worked hard for. I'm not even working in what I'm supposed to be working in. I'm bartending all because my priorities are not in the right place. You know, um, and I got lonely because I felt like, you know, my family doesn't want to help me because they feel like if they help me, I'm just going to end up helping the narcissist. They thought I was like a full sucker, like, like I was going to be taking care of a man, you know? And, you know, this is why my grandmother was telling me this man is going to grind you to dust. Um, another thing before I end this video, because I rambled on for a long time, but I just wanted to finish um, yesterday's topic off, is that... The narcissist, you guys, um, to those of you who, you know, might smoke or drink, the narcissist keeps you intoxicated during the relationship. And when I was younger, I used to tell myself, like, you know, smoking weed, it's not a big deal because the narcissist had me high. So this is my first relationship. This person, I have never gotten that drunk or high in my life right the narcissist kept telling me you're lying you know you were probably smoking with other dudes like they would say stuff like that to me and I would tell them like no I haven't I really haven't but they didn't believe me um I think they always felt like I was lying you know but it's because they're liars you know, and then they, they, they don't respect women. So they always think that you're lying as a woman and they're always trying to get over on you. That's why, it, that's why as a woman, you should never deal with the narcissist because they're always trying to get over on you.
because they hate you just for being a woman. So I will say this. The narcissist will keep you intoxicated. They'll keep you high and then they'll stalk you. And they'll be like, hey, come outside. Let's smoke. Hey, I just, let's, let's go have some drinks. Let's go to a restaurant and have some drinks. They're good at buying you alcohol. They're good at, at smoking with you. And you might think to yourself, we doesn't do anything to you. You might think to yourself that you, you've been doing it. You're like, oh, these weed is not a harsh drug compared to other drugs, right? Or it calms me down. But I'm going to tell you, when I left the narcissist, I, I was put in really rough situations. And it got to the point where I knew I had to make changes because I didn't like the person that I was becoming. And then I started to see these behaviors in other people. Because now my social circle started to change. And I started to see, like, this isn't where it's at, you know? This is like, this is like the narcissist world of, of not doing anything and living on a fucking cloud. And... I just wanted to change everything that he introduced to me. And I'm going to tell you guys, when I finally got clean for the first time of the narcissist and their, you know, them smoking all the time, once I got away from all that, my mind, it's almost like I came back to reality. Like I came back to reality and and I, I felt different I felt like I could see clear I felt like I got more energy I got my energy back the narcissist keeps you on a standby they try to keep you drugged up they want you addicted to alcohol to to smoking they want you addicted even to heart, harsher drugs. And all this is just another way to control you. So even if the narcissist is a drug addict, guess what? They're still a narcissist. Just like there's empaths who are drug addicts, there's narcissists who are drug addicts. And those are the worst type of people you, you're going to deal with. When narcissists are on drugs... You got to think about it. The disorder is already jacked up and crazy. They feel like they can do anything and get away with it. When they're on drugs, they're like on another level of narcissism. And, you know, this is just, you know, some advice for the younger generation as well. Because, you know, um, certain things that you think don't affect you, they do affect you, you know. Um, that really kept me, I feel like that's what, then the narcissist kept me in a, in a state of mind where I was very, I was becoming lazy. I was becoming like sluggish, like, um, I just wanted to be with them and just, you know, um, they just want to use you. They just want to use you for supply. They just want to keep you you know, all to themselves, you know, and when you get away, that stalking doesn't stop because they feel like you're still supply until you're dead. They feel like you'll always be their supply, even if they put you on a shelf. That's why when one relationship ends, you know, they come right back. You know, they come back to the last person or to someone they knew gave them endless some supply to see if they could just befriend that person. So, um, you know, it's something to think about, you know, um, and I know people who've been through, through worse situations than me who, you know, narcissists, you know, drug them up. They were doing real jacked up drugs and when 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 the narcissist brings you into that world see before that right 
I was into sports and, and different things. I was more productive than the narcissist. So when he brought me into his ratchet, low down, you know, bottom, the, the lowest of the lowest, bottom of the, of the barrel um, lifestyle. And I thought, you know, I thought he just needed motivation or something. No, they like rolling in that mud. They like it. It's who they are. It's who they were designed to be. And they've accepted that. They've accepted that they don't believe they can change. And, it, and the disorder gets worse because they keep sabotaging themselves and the people around them and ruining the way people view them and ruining relationships, ruining people's lives. They're so far deep, they've been doing it for too long. So when that person brought me into their lifestyle, I was able to get more of an understanding of narcissists who drug up young women. You know, that's why there's so many. If, if Every city has those streets where there's prostitutes walking around and they're young. They're young. Most likely they drug them up and, they, and, and, it, and guess what? It started with weed. Some people are just not mentally as strong. They didn't have a strong family to teach them these things. So they were able to get manipulated to doing harsher drugs with the narcissist. And then they couldn't come back from it. You know? And... You know, the narcissist stalking never stopped. And I remember one time thinking to myself, the stalking started to get crazy. And I remember thinking to myself, are they on drugs? Like, are they on drugs? Because this is, I always knew something was wrong, but now I'm starting to think they're on drugs. Right? I never knew how people behaved when they're on drugs, especially you know, harsher drugs. I didn't know, yay, when people are sniffing coke, they're sniffing their nose. I didn't know that certain people are just frozen in time, you know, moving slow. I, I couldn't catch all these things, right? But then I started to notice when I started working and, and when you're, you're when, you, when you're working in management and stuff and you're dealing with employees, You'll see that certain people, they're moving slow. They think they're moving fast, but they're high as shit. You, they think they're working hard because they know they're doing their job. They know they're not bothering anyone, but they're moving slow. You could tell the difference. It's like you can't smell yourself, but I can smell you. You know? So I started to pay attention to... <laughs> sometimes when... when you know, you're not around that lifestyle. You don't understand it. But then once the narcissist, you know, introduced me, you know, to that lifestyle and taught me a lot. I feel like I learned a lot about people and, in, in, you know, through the narcissist. And I started to think to myself, this person, they're stalking and just start getting crazy. Their discards got very disrespectful. Their anger was so intense. It didn't make sense to me. Um, I have a brother who ended up on drugs. You know, thank God he changed his life. But when he was on drugs, he was bad. I'm talking about he beat up my mom's boyfriend to steal his watch. To go pawn it for some money for drugs so that lets you know how out of out of his mind he was um for no apparent reason you know other than he was doing drugs because my mom's boyfriend never did anything to her so i started saying 
the stalking is starting it's starting to get kind of like it doesn't make it's crazy it's it's like you're used to them doing it but it's to like another level and i said my my conscience mind said i think he's on drugs like out of nowhere my mind just said it you know he would one time he hoovered me he wanted me to come outside to talk to him in the car. And when I got in the car, he just started choking me out of nowhere. And then he got on top of me and put his weight on me. Because I was trying to open the door. And then when I tried to open the door, he grabbed my arm. He slapped my hand away from the doorknob. And he, he just put his whole body on me. And I couldn't move. And then he started choking me. And then I was trying to push him off and open the door and I just couldn't get him off of me. And I told him, I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe, you know, to the point where I thought like he's going to kill me. But he wanted to choke me to the point of. Of death, like he wanted me to get close to death. He knew when to let go. It was like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choke you to where you think you're never going to catch another breath again. And then, and then I'm going to allow you to breathe again. And after he did everything, I remember trying to get out the car. And he just ran out the car behind me and grabbed me and started holding me. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I'm sorry. Let's just go in the house and lay down and go to sleep. And... I was so exhausted, so drained, fighting and stuff from fighting someone that I love, and I couldn't understand why they were be behaving that way. They they were stalking me just to choke me to choke me to death because I didn't want to answer to them. You know, we ended up going to sleep, and it was like he was holding me like I was some type of possession, like that's all I wanted. You know, like I was a possession to him. That's why I became addicted to them, because I felt like. Well, I don't have anything else. You did all this desperate shit to get me. Now you have me. And now that you have me, you don't want me. That's crazy. Now that you have me completely, that I'm your I'm your total fucking slave. No family, no nothing. Now you don't want me. Now you're grinding me to dust. What I told you, my grandmother said about you. You knew my family was all I had and you took that from me and then you left. And then you're coming back acting crazy. You're coming back out of nowhere stalking me acting crazy. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I had nothing left but him. And to deal with it. Um, and I started thinking. He, he, This man has to be on drugs. Because I saw my brother on drugs. For some time before he got in trouble. Eventually he changed his life. And he's doing. he He's doing well now. It's like. It, it's like. It's almost like. It never happened. He. He's living life like it never even happened. But he went through a period. Where he was trepping out. And that made me. That made me feel like. You know. Is the narcissist on drugs? They always told me they would never do other drugs. But now they're popping pills. They're popping Xanax and stuff. And I'm like. I thought you would never do drugs. And they're like. It's just the pill. It's just. It makes you tired. It makes you go to sleep. He's making it seem like it's not a big deal. That's when I was like, okay, well maybe he just he just pops pills every now and then. The stalking increased until I finally told myself, nope, it's not pills, it's he is not only a narcissist, but he's on something. 
even though he's been denying he, since the beginning of our relationship he told me he told me oh I smoke but I don't you know I would never do anything else you know that's the idea he gave me and it's I didn't even ask him he told me these things himself I didn't ask him hey do you smoke hey do you do I didn't ask him these things he told me himself you know just from conversation like when he would talk about other people he would be like I would never do that or he would be like oh that's you know my cousin used to do used to do drugs and he did all that when his mother passed away and you know he's like I would never do that that's some base head shit that's base head shit you know and I would think to myself you know the narcissist is going out to to bars and things like that I'm like he's doing so he gets I knew he got easily influenced by people's lifestyles like he's a clout chaser so I knew something is up he's I, I started to see his clout chasing behavior you know he's always you know he's always writing everyone's clit so I was like something is up with this person they're doing drugs or something and I said to myself, the narcissist, I'm going to play stupid with them. Since they think I'm so stupid already, I'm going to just play dumb. And I remember one night, you know, we were drinking and I told him, you know, I've always wanted to do coke at least one time. And he goes, shut the hell up. No, you don't. I'm like, for real, I'm like, I'm like low key. Like I, I, you know, just talking stupid to him. I'm talking dumb on purpose because I felt like, I feel like narcissists aren't as smart as you think. They're just really evil and manipulators and they can easily be deceived. If you play, if you act dumb, cause they think you're dumb. So if you act dumb, you'll get more out of them. So I acted really dumb. And I said, you know, I want to I want to do coke. And then he goes, I have a friend that sells it. And I was like, you could get some. And he's like, yeah, I can go get some. He said, but you're bullshitting. Don't make me go get it. And then you're not going to and then I bring it to you and you're not going to do it. Don't make me uh, contact him and waste his time. I was like, no, I'm gonna do it. He and then I and then I was like, are you gonna do it with me? And then he goes, yeah. And um, he was like, uh, as a matter of fact, I have a little bit on me. And then I was like, what you do? He said, yeah, some guy gave it to me at work. Some guy gave it to me at work. And then I was like, kind of like, didn't really believe him. And then he took it out, put the line on the table. And that's when it dawned on me. <laughs> that's when it dawned on me, right? Because sometimes... I would find um, rolled up paper, but I didn't think nothing of it. Like I didn't, I did find a rolled up paper, but I didn't think anything of it. Once they rolled up that dollar, it hit me. I've seen a rolled up paper before. So this isn't his first rodeo. This isn't his first time. And then I started thinking to myself, all that stalking and shit he was doing, he was probably on drugs the whole damn time. I just didn't know. You know, when people are on drugs, they lie. They tell you they're not on drugs. You know, some people who smoke, they'll tell you they smoke. But people who are on drugs, they're ashamed of it. So they lie. The narcissist lies. And I started to think, well, maybe he was always doing it. But now he's just doing it so much or it, it's starting to mess with his mind even more. 
and he's already a narcissist. Maybe it's intensifying everything to another level. But my suspicions, my mind, my conscience mind told me, I think he's on drugs. You know, my mind said, lie to him. Say you want some. And he fell for it. He fell for it. And then, you know, I that's when I knew if they lied about this, they could have been lying about it the whole time. So this is why I, I also wanted to talk about this is that when it comes to narcissist stalking, a lot of them are on drugs. Sometimes you think certain drugs don't do anything, but yeah, it... The narcissist already has a personality disorder, so it intensifies their narcissism. And, and and it's it's almost like it's almost like when someone is drunk and they're acting dumb. But even though they're acting dumb, they know they're acting dumb. You know, it's like you're you're drunk, but you're you know you're acting dumb. You're not you could blame it on the alcohol. You could say, oh, it's it was the alcohol. But you were doing what you wanted to do. You were just, you had that liquid courage to say, I'm drunk and I don't give a damn. You know? So that's why the narciss a, a lot of those narcissists that are very stalkerish and dangerous um, do this. is because they're doing drugs. They're not going to admit it. A lot of narcissists, will. they know they're stalkerish. But a lot of them, they're not going to tell you that they're on drugs because they don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to lose their jobs. But I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have worked with people or had narcissistic bosses. And you better believe some of them are probably on drugs and they're just functioning. They're just functioning enough to where you think it's just the narcissism. But they're all coked up and tripping out. And th that's what makes them more aggressive than they already are. That's what makes them feel more invincible. That's what keeps them up. And they're like, oh, I'm going to work long hours. You know, and I didn't know that. And then I started paying attention to that, you know, at the job. And I started to realize a lot of people were high. A lot of people were on drugs. And a lot of a lot of that stuff is being ignored in the job place because there's narcissism that that's running wild. And some of these people do it, too. So, you know, you ignore the fact that a lot of the stalking and stuff like that will intensify when they're on drugs. And that's when it gets dangerous, because that's when I got choked. And that's when they, they'll practically kill you. They can kill you or put you in a position where you you feel you feel like you have to defend yourself because they're almost at the point of killing you and you you end up doing something to them cuz you're not understanding what's happening. Narcissists are disgusting people. They cheat on you, they lie, they do drugs, they hook up with prostitutes. That's another one. You know? They'll get caught for doing shit and then they want to stalk you and hoover you in. They want you to forgive them for the nastiest things, you know? And it's like, I just couldn't wake the hell up. I'm thinking the narcissist, oh my God, I think they're on drugs. I need to save them. Now I want to save them because they're on drugs. You know what it's like trying to save someone who's on drugs? You can't save that person. They have to want to change for themselves. And the narcissist made it seem like they were just going through a period of time where they were just experiencing, experimenting, because they've never done it before. They're partying with their friends, and they're like trying to get new supply and... I guess coke is the drug that people have fun and go to clubs and do. I guess that's the thing. You know, I didn't know that was a thing. 
But I know that the narcissist got so drunk and wasted that um, when he drove home, the police pulled him over for a DUI in an area where there was a lot of prostitution going on. And when I called the police station, a female officer told me, she basically gave me the hint of where they found him and what he might have been trying to do, even though that's not what he got charged for. He got charged for a DUI. And then when I called back to see his court date, they told me, whatever officer you spoke to earlier, she wasn't supposed to give you all that information that she gave you. She she wasn't supposed to tell me where he where he got stopped at, what area, what it's known for. She wasn't supposed to say all that because that's not what he got charged for. She was supposed to give out that information of where the edge, the way she said it, she goes, he got caught over here on da 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 da, -da right? So I'm like, that area is known for prostitution. The way she said it, made me think oh that area is known for that you know so it was like she was trying to give me a hint woman a woman and I didn't take it and I'm just you know all this stuff is going on I'm defending this person I'm there for them and they didn't appreciate any, any of it and they only stalked me after that, after they were going through all of that and their life was, they were going through rough situations, the stalking only intensified because they needed me, but they were mad at me because I exposed them. They were mad because I exposed them because when I called up there to get answers and she said what she said to me, the narcissist's brother was right in front of me and I told him what, what I was told. And then the narcissist was like, whose side are you on? You should have kept that to yourself. You shouldn't have said. So they were mad because I exposed that. And then other people got the same person. Other people, um, the narcissist's mother was also like, she was assuming the same thing I was assuming, you know? She she told him, you know, don't don't let me find out you're out here like your brother, his other brother. Don't let me find out you're out here like your brother. And then the 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 narcissist didn't want anything to do with me because I exposed them. But after a while, they started hoovering me again and they wouldn't leave me alone. And I'm thinking my mind is telling me, don't trust him. He's mad at you. He's telling you he misses you. He's lying. But my heart was saying, but I love him. But I love him. You know, when women say, but I love him. Well, he don't love you, girl. So um, you better believe these people only love themselves. So, you know, the stalking got crazier, came back and. The abuse just got worse because now I have to pay for what I did. I have to pay for exposing him. And that's why the narcissist almost killed me. I ended up in the hospital sick. To this day, I'm still sick. I'm just sick and, you know, I still have, you know, certain health problems because of the stress that I went through. Um, that it, it drained me so much. I even had lost so much weight. And, and people just were like, you know, in shock, you know, because that's what these people do to you. They they want to grind you to dust, like my grandmother said. And it took me to 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 nearly die for me to understand what was happening. And th this is why I make these videos. This is why I still put in the time as, you know, the best to my abilities, you know, this is why, you know, I made a part two and this part two, you know, went on for a long time, but it's because even though I'm, I'm being calm and I'm talking to you guys about different experiences that I went through with narcissist people and narciss narcissism in general and how these people work and how they're liars, a lot of them are 
they're drug users on the low and you don't know. They just want you to be drunk and high so they don't feel uncomfortable. That shit is crazy. And then they're trying to destroy you because they destroyed themselves and it's crazy. It's really crazy. And they were putting on a smile and a persona to you that's not who they actually are. You just think that's who they, you think you know them. You don't know them. You don't know that person. You don't know this person. You don't know that woman. You don't know that man. Stop looking at the facade. Stop looking at the physical form. Stop thinking they're going to treat other people better. You're dealing with a, a diabolical person. They laugh at you when you call them demons. They laugh. They're, because to them, it's like, you're just, that's what you're using to describe them. They're like, okay, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the devil. That's just your, that's just the word that you're using to, to identify me. That's it. Because you think I'm wicked. And as wicked as you think I am, yeah, I might, might have done some bad things, but they still, they don't feel the hurt. They don't they don't have empathy, so they don't feel the hurt of what you're experiencing. They know what it is. They they can describe what you're feeling because you've told them many times. They know stalking you is bad. They know that when you discard them or they discard you and you don't want to get back with them, they know they should leave you alone. But it's funny to them. This person is taking you as a joke. The narcissist will kill you and then start laughing like, wake up, you're not really dead. Wake up. Hey, I didn't really, I didn't even hit you that hard. I didn't even, I didn't even choke you that hard. What the hell, wake up, stop playing with me. They'll start crying, shedding tears, victimizing themselves. And then they'll blame you. It was her. She was trying to do something to me. I just defended myself and I don't know how it happened. They are crazy. You see, if, if you're dealing with someone that they're not 100% there with you, you know, and they, keep, they keep disappearing, doing funny things. They're stalking you. They're driving past your house. They're stalking, they're, walk, they're driving past your family and friends' homes. They're stalking your friends and family. They're contacting people. They have no business contacting. They're trying to hook up with your friends. They make up lies about hooking up with people close to you just so you won't. The narcissist will make up lies about hooking up with your friends so that you don't trust your friends. I remember the narcissist was tripping out on drugs, probably, probably on drugs. I don't know. But they said that they slept with my friend. They were trying to hurt me. And I remember I called my friend. I was like, you were sleeping with so-and-so. And they're like, girl, he's crazy. He's saying that because he doesn't want you to have any friends. It could have been true. It could have not been true. But. That's why I had to get rid of the, the narcissist because I didn't know what was real anymore. It was disrespectful either way, you know. So this is just, you know, my experiences so that people can learn from it. If you feel like, you know, your life went to shit, you know, it gets better. You just have to keep moving forward. If, you know, if you if you're free and you know that, yeah, you might be hurting, but you know that you can still you can you can still work at whatever it is you want to do. You still have certain opportunities. Take advantage of those opportunities. If you're not in if if you don't have you know, if you don't have anything stopping you from from your dreams, but yourself and your own emotions, put your emotions to the side and focus on that. You know, um because I I have I I have opportunities that I can't get back. Yeah, I have new things and things like that, but it it still hurts to know 
that this person literally turned me to dust. They killed the old version of me. They killed the good girl, you know. I'm still I still consider myself a good person, but they they killed the innocent child, the innocent girl in me. You know, they they killed who I was supposed to be. The path I was supposed to be in. Who I was supposed to become. They killed my family, my friends. You know, they killed my old life. I don't even know how I'm here talking to you guys, but I am. You know, this is why I started my channel to begin with, because it was a form of me escaping from what I was going through. You know, um, and it was like, you know, I wanted to be heard. I wanted to be saved. And even though I made all these videos, no one came and saved me. But I'm still putting the energy to save others, even though no one saved me, you know. And, and that's what empaths tend to do. We want to help people and most people won't help us, you know. They use us. They give us a pat on the back. And they move on with their life, you know. that's It is what it is. But I'm strong enough to hold my own. You know, I'm strong enough to not expect anything from anyone. You know, I'm just here to tell you the truth. So if you're dealing with people who are putting you through all these weird situations and they won't leave you alone and keep stalking, keep doing all this. It doesn't matter if they have a good job. I've seen police officers, you know, I've seen these people tweaking out on drugs and they're, they're the people you trust. They're just in better situations than other than low, lower grade narcissists. They're doing the same shit. They're doing drugs. They're doing the same stuff that lower grade narcissists is. They're just making more money. And when they're stalking you, you better believe there's some drug or something going on on top of it. That's why it gets crazier and then it gets dangerous because they can kill you. Or put you in a position for, for you to kill yourself, make you crash. You know, they're yelling at you while you're driving and you're thinking it's just the narcissism that's making them yell at you from the top of their lungs. No, that person is on drugs on top of it. So um, I'm sending you guys lots of love, light, peace and your healing. And I will talk to you guys on another podcast. Love you guys. Oh, don't forget to subscribe or like this video. Bye.